Hello and welcome. Well, we each have had first-hand experiences at the trials and tribulations that COVID-19 has delivered. Now, depending on which state and or territory that you live in, you may very well still be experiencing life in lockdown. As we know, Victoria, where I am right now, and Casey is as well, we're right in the midst of it. So irrespective, if, you, if you're if you looking back at life in lockdown or looking at it right smack bang in the middle of the eyes, you may have unintentionally formed a new habit during life in lockdown as a coping mechanism. That being drinking a little more alcohol than normal. So if you want to reduce the amount of alcohol you've been drinking recently, uh, then you're not alone. Now, did you know that one in five Aussies actually regret how much alcohol they drank during uh, the first lockdown? Well, to help bravely share her personal experience, we welcome our special guest, Casey Bennett, a mother of three kids, all under the age of eight years of age. Now, she's from Victoria, and in that, she actually picked up the habit of drinking daily during our first lockdown in our state. Thanks for joining us, Casey. How are you doing? Hi, good, thanks. <laughs> now, thank you for sharing your story, um, why you started drinking more. And I'm sure there's plenty of parents wanting to, to know how you actually break the habit. Now, firstly, you know, with everything that we've been living through, it's no surprise that parents have looked for another way um, and another coping mechanism with the stresses that we've been living through and are continuing to live through as well, including, sure. including stuff like losing work, you know, financial pressure, pressures, um, loss of social connectedness and uh, possibly even having people and loved ones um, suffer with COVID, you know, given how many cases we've actually got in, in our state here. Mm. So, you know, when we look at life, it's been really nothing short of how to put it, frankly. But you know, in these never seen before circumstances, I guess we're all just trying to do our very best. So I'd just love to know your thoughts on this initially. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's just exceptional circumstances we've never been in before and yeah. I think a lot of people just like myself and my husband used a glass of wine at night as our sort of reward for getting through the day and a bit of a it felt a bit like a stress reliever um I know I had to stop work because I run a Pilates studio and we weren't allowed to work so I think initially being home every night, which I'm not normally, is I'm normally working. Um, and I was spending more time with my husband once the kids were in bed. And so just sort of having a glass of wine seemed like a nice thing to do. It sort of almost felt like the weekend. And then it just <laughs> it, it was, was every over day and out. over. Groundhog <laughs> day, exactly. And yeah, I mean, that first lockdown ugh, didn't feel quite as long as this one is. But yeah, we just noticed that initially we would say oh do you want a glass tonight oh yes and then as the weeks went on we didn't even ask it was just we got our knife and fork and we got our glass of wine like it was a, a given that we would drink every night and we didn't necessarily drink a lot every night but it was prior to lockdown exactly prior to lockdown we were only weekend drinkers so you know going from three nights a week to seven nights a week it's a significant jump yeah and we yeah we both were aware we were lucky that we were both in the same boat we were both doing it together and we both realized hold on this is a lot more than we normally drink like we're going through our wine so much quicker um you know the cost of it as well I, I wasn't working and we sort of realized oh hold on we're spending a lot of money on wine and we're drinking far too much so we were able to make the decision together and we were aware of that behaviour together, which made a big difference, I think. It would be very hard if your significant other was not, you know, supportive of trying to cut back or, yeah, we sort of helped egg each other on a little bit to make a change. A hundred percent. And yeah. there's um, new poll data from the Alcohol and Drug Foundation um, where they surveyed a thousand Australians between the ages of 18 and 65. And the poll revealed that many Australians had picked up the habit in relation to their alcohol consumption during lockdown um, and showed both sort of positive and ne negative effects. Now, is there anything else, I guess, and you've give us a, given us a little bit of um, intel, I guess, about your personal experience. Um, 
but I understand you had to shut the doors immediately to your to your business, the Pilates Basement, um, yep. which yep. would have been an incredible shock. Um, and so we we empathise um, with you and, and all their heart and our hearts go out to anyone um, in a similar situation as COVID has affected and continuing to affect so many businesses. Um, mm. Did you or how did you find that? in particular affected you and did you find that was maybe a contributing factor to the change in your drinking patterns or not? I, I do. I think initially it wasn't such a shock. I mean, we sort of thought it was coming, but we certainly didn't expect it to go on as long as it did. Um, but yeah, I think for me having three boys under eight, especially <laughs> now they're home all day. Um, going to work is almost like my self-care. Like I enjoyed spending time with adults and, and being a little bit separate from the kids and feeling like I was contributing to, you know, society. And so having that cut off just meant the, the stress levels of being home all the time. All of a sudden I'm a stay at home mum, which I, you know, hadn't chosen to be. So the stress of that and the anxiety of not knowing when it was going to end and, the financial pressure of when am I going to be able to work again? And all of those factors just combined, trying to homeschool. I'm not a teacher. I never trained to be a school teacher um, with a toddler to entertain and a baby to look after <laughs> was just, yeah, the, the stress levels and. It was all combined. All like, combined. Yes. And yes. being that you can't, you couldn't go anywhere or really doing it, do anything. And you didn't have that you time anymore as well. Exactly. So exactly. So then at night when the kids would go to bed, that was sort of like our, oh, let's celebrate and relax and you know, have our have our wine and as well. And that was our experience. Homeschooling and and or assisting your children (laughs) in their remote learning, whichever phrase I guess everyone's using. (laughs) Yes. But this you know, in this, in essence, has made many parents feel like they're actually aging in dog years, and it's not a great time to increase your grey hairs when when all the hairdressers are shut, as we were just saying offline before <laughs> we <were>. as well. <laughs> um, and your husband Craig is a carpenter, a tradie, and was yes. able to keep working and to get out of the house, um, yes. as you just said. So you've you've gone from having a balance of having new time to be able to, you know, with parenting to just, just being home and just homeschooling um, the three, the three boys on your own. So now how did you find the experience of homeschooling the three kids at home by yourself? And did you find Look, it it's obviously contributed? To- <laughs> for sure. For sure. And I think that that's the case for most people. It's just not something we ever thought we'd have to do or planned to do. Um, I think everyone's situation would be different. If you had multiple kids doing school, that would be a challenge. For me, the challenge was three kids all in very different stages. One doing school, one, you know, a toddler, he can't read to himself. He can't occupy himself all day. So I'm trying to keep him, you know, occupied other than just watching the TV. And then a baby (laughs) who still needs, you know, nappy changes and sleeps and being fed. So it was the logistics of how to fit it all in and the juggle of that was what I found really stressful. I was very lucky my son who's in grade one, he's quite a studious kid. So the actual, you know, difficulty of the work wasn't a problem for me. It was the, yeah, the the juggle of trying to manage them all and, you know, keep the noise down a little bit and just keep everyone on a bit of an even heel. It was that, that was the challenge and still is the challenge, obviously, in Victoria. Yes. <laughs> We're still going. Would be for so many households. And you mentioned yeah. before that you justified the wine as a reward, um, getting through homeschooling or just making it through mm. another day of lockdown with three kids under eight years old. Yes. Um, and yes. before you knew it, you were rewarding yourselves with um, alcohol every evening. Um, did you find yeah. that at that stage it had sort of um, control, that you had control of that momentum or if it, it sort of had control of you like what what was sort of that feeling as as like sometimes when they say you know you can't see the forest for the trees and I guess a lot of families now that we're in stage four it's even more amplified as well so did you find you had control of the situation and or it was controlling you look I think to start with yeah we felt we felt in control but yeah it sort of took on a life of its own yeah um and 
certainly did yeah just become a habit it didn't even take any thought it was just our new normal um and I think we my husband and I were quite lucky in that we we picked it up before it controlled us and we were very aware of not wanting that to happen so yeah hence why we made our the change but um, I think, yeah, it can be a bit of a rabbit hole where people don't realise that's what's been happening until it's been, you know, how many months have we been in lockdown now? Uh, um, about three years, I think, it feels like. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so they, uh, you know, I, I've actually had messages from friends after they've realised, <laughs> hello, this is Nathaniel. Hi, um, Nathaniel. Matey, matey, can you go out to your brother, darling, please? I'll be I out love soon. your Spider-Man please, please, outfit. Please. Love Please, it. darling. <laughs> anyway. That's okay. Um, <laughs> and, and you mentioned yeah. also that the longer the, the lockdown went, the less of a charade was made about drinking and you stopped making excuses and even asking each other, like you said, if you wanted to drink. Yeah. Instead, you just poured just yourself a, given. a glass of wine and it Absolutely. just became part of your everyday wind-down routine. So how long did it actually take for you to realise you had increased your alcohol consumption at that stage? Um, I think we noticed it straight away, but being that it was, we didn't know how long lockdown was going to last. We sort of thought, oh, this is just a small blip in time. This is how we're going to cope with it. Um, and that's okay. Because if it was only a few weeks, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. But yeah. the fact it went on and on and on. Um, yeah, so we were aware of it very early, but we just didn't think it was a problem until it went and went yeah. and went and went. Yeah. And science does tell us it takes around 66 days to form a habit. Um, and this is how long um, most Australians spent in lockdown. And for Victorians, yes. as, as we know, it's much longer as we're currently experiencing a real life Groundhog Day at the moment. <laughs> um, so, I mean, were you aware at that time how long it actually takes to form a new habit being 66 days at all? Not at all. Not at all. Um, I actually, I don't think I'd ever really thought about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely wasn't aware of that until, and, and, yeah, the results came out. But yeah. yeah. And, and did, I guess, the, the, the drinking like gradu gradually increase or did you notice like a sudden spike and or escalation, for example? Like, was it just that you were just having one glass mm. of wine a day, a, a night? And I mean, the other thing that, that, that comes into consideration, which we were just talking about, is the fact that what a standard drink is when you go to yes. going out for dinner or you're going wherever, in a pub or what, what have you, of course, they've got that line, yeah. don't they? Um, and yes, yeah. The yeah. standard <laughs> drink is however many milliliters, depending what it is you're drinking. But of course, yeah. at home, we're not taking into consideration what a standard drink is also. Right. So... I'd love to know your, yeah. your thoughts on that in particular. Yeah. Well, I mean, the frequency that we started drinking was immediate. Like pretty much as soon as lockdown was announced, then it started and it was every night from then on. Um, and it certainly started with just the one. And although, like we said, with a standard drink, it might have been more than a one, but <laughs> it's it hard felt to like know. a one for us. <laughs> but I also I found it interesting after a few weeks how quickly – our tolerance changed. So, you know, we'd have just that one glass initially, but after a month or, or so, I can't remember exactly, but it was like, oh, well, we may as well just finish off that. You know, we've got a tiny bit in the bottle left, so we'll just finish that. And then it became two. And I don't think we ever got more than sort of two, two and a bit glasses each, but we didn't even notice it. It was almost like we were drinking cordial. Like just our tolerance over such a regular pattern of drinking had really changed. So mm -hmm. we could easily finish a bottle between us and not even blink. And yeah. I mean, we weren't starting till the kids were in bed. Um, but I certainly know I've got a few friends. They've even sent me messages recently since this is all this campaign started saying how, yeah, they'd started drinking earlier in the day because they weren't at work. They didn't have to drive anywhere. The kids were all at home. And so then that's naturally going to lead to drinking more because if you start earlier, you know, there's more hours in the evening before you go to bed. 100%. So 
your tolerance grows and that that time was taken away where you weren't knocking off work took a while to get home get dinner ready you're home all day like there's nothing really to stop you if you aren't aware of your you know, behavior and, and make a conscious decision. Yeah, and your body does yeah. adapt. It's incredible how quickly we can so adapt quickly. to our daily routines, you know, under a great amount of stress. And even just For you know, sure. um, when our bodies from a pH level as well, like from being that it obviously becomes more acidic when we're drinking alcohol, your body just becomes more and more accustomed to be able to be okay. Tolerate with it. it. Tolerate yeah, that's it. right. Yeah, but as opposed yeah. to when your your body is actually at the at the other end of the pH level where it's healthy and it's thriving with with good stuff. So yes, that being said, I'd love to know how did you break the habit then? Well, we we did a few things. So physically to break the habit, we the first few nights we would still use our wine glasses, our same wine glasses, but we'd put like kombucha or juice or soft drink in it instead but it still felt like a treat because that's not something we would drink you know every night or during the day so that was still our like special treat at night and then butcher in replacement of wine there you go very good even looked (laughs) even looked a bit like a rosé when i was having my uh raspberry kombucha but and then we progressed to we didn't need that anymore after a few nights and we progressed to having like cups of tea and chocolate. That was a different way of treating ourselves. I mean, you can argue, I suppose, what's worse for you. But in terms of alcohol, um, just to break that cycle, having tea and a bit of chalky was another thing. We also tried to just go to bed a bit earlier because you remove that temptation. You know, you put it off. You put off having a drink a little bit later every day. And then if you go to bed a bit earlier... That also removes that temptation, but and it wasn't. My like husband a, and I worked. No, sorry, you go. <laughs> you know, I, I was just going to say. So it wasn't like a um, like a cold turkey. You, you gradually sort of ease yourself out of it. Is that right? Well, it was cold turkey with the wine, but we had to sort of ease ourselves out of just the habit of the routine the ourselves ritual something. of something. Exactly, exactly the ritual of it. That's the perfect um, way to put it. Um, yeah. But the actual finishing of the wine, we did cold turkey and we made a commitment. We were like, mm-hmm. we're going to do the month with no alcohol and we were both in it together, which really helped and that made a huge difference. And once that month was over, look, we're back to drinking wine now, but very much in moderation, just back to the weekends, trying to get, well, we are back to our pre-lockdown routine. Yes, It also <laughs> helps to give a bit of, um, to the week, like I get happy I know. that it's Friday night or Saturday it's not night day. You don't know what day the yeah, week exactly, it is. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like we've sort of got a bit of a routine back to our, well, for me. Yeah, routine is still working. So, But for me, it's like, yeah. you know, you still look forward to the weekend and we're trying to do different, have different habits on the weekend compared to during the week. But Love yeah, it. it's more about, yeah, that awareness of your behaviour and, and not, necessarily going cold turkey but just bringing back the routine that perhaps you had before Uh so once you realized how how much more alcohol you had been going through than normal and then made a conscious decision to um to go back to your usual drinking routine of only on the weekends as you've just mentioned how long did it take for you to notice an overall difference in your health and energy levels then well when we stopped drinking we were back to what did we get to stage two or something where I'd gone back to work I'd only been back at work for maybe a week a week and a half when it then was announced we were going back into lockdown so initially it was okay because it sort of felt like we were back to our normal level of drinking but we were also getting back to real life like we'd started to exercise a bit more again and I was back working and life was slowly heading in that right direction. The challenge came when lockdown was announced again and it was only the middle of the month or not even. We were like, oh my goodness, can we last, you know? Can we, can we do this even in lockdown? And we were lucky in that we both took our commitment, you know, seriously and we helped each other to get through the month. But I could see it was a slippery slope like it would have been very easy to just jump straight back into that habit well that's just the thing um, and we, we certainly found time. yes we did and 
when we were drinking every night, we had lessened our exercise. We had started to, you know, eat a little bit more, like different takeaway and things like that. And we were just feeling really sluggish. And we came out of that lockdown feeling very blur. And so we were really keen to try to approach this, this one a little bit better come out the other end less feeling less blur so yeah not drinking as much we have both exercised more we are trying to eat better and the the combination has really helped and so now you know on a weekend I don't feel guilty for having a glass of wine it's fine but because we know it's just part of our weekly routine but it's very moderated yeah and it's great that you've learned from that first lockdown because we yeah you know, in the situation at, you know if uh, unfortunately that's right stage four would hate to think that we would ever have to go back into a stage four again but i mean the first mm. lockdown did feel like it was a little bit of a novelty i don't know about you but it actually you know this is something new very new I have to say yes <laughs> concept but um now that we sort of been sort of hit with this stage four restrictions that there is a different level of heaviness to it um and definitely I have sort of found and just you know um I'm not sure what you think, but for, for a lot of family, families and people that maybe didn't learn that lesson in that first level of lockdown, this second lockdown is is going to be a lot harder and a much more difficult on the other side of it to be able to come out yes. and to be able to change um, different habits that have been sort of adapted as well. And yeah. you know, so I don't know. I mean, it's been a, such a long time, that 66 days to form a habit. Well, I mean, in Melbourne anyway, we've we've certainly Surpassed well and that. truly bypassed that. So, yeah, people, it won't just be their drinking too. It'll be, yeah, whether Healthy. they've sort of become more sedentary or eating not as well or, and it's it's all seems like even when lockdown finishes, it's not just going to click and be over. There's the stages, you know, it'll be very gradual. Incremental. Return to normal and it's really hard to be, keep your like motivation and keep your spunk when it, everything is just so yeah. heavy like you said it's yeah but it's just a matter of I think Hard. just be, being aware of it and I think that that is the it, first step being aware of that's what right. changes are in your body how are yeah. you feeling healthy how are you feeling any different <laughs> which we are that's all, right obviously feeling different than than you know life pre-covid uh it's just a that's matter right. of then from a healthy perspective, working out how we can sort of work our way back to that. Um, and That's you know, right. I mean, some people might have created really good habits as well. Like they might, working from home, have had time to exercise more or sleep better or look after themselves. And that's great. So it's being aware of your good habits and your bad habits and sort of, I suppose, being like empowered to make a change if you think you should, you know, yes. I'm not saying everybody has to, but it's absolutely knowing what, what you want to do going forward, aware of where you're at now and having yeah, that power to be like, just cause I've perhaps drunk more these last few months doesn't mean now that is what I'm going to do forever. Of course. You, of course. you can gradually make a change because it's such long-term circumstances. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And we don't want yeah in 20 years to be like, Oh, we all drank too much and we kept it up and now then we want to, we want the power. You've got to be empowered yourself to make your changes it, yeah. if it's necessary. Yeah. And, and, and reading the information about the poll as well, it's, it's incredible that half, half the people who told the alcohol and drug, sorry, the drug and alcohol foundation, sorry, that they drank more during that time said that they wanted to reduce how much they were drinking. So um, yeah. in saying that, did you find, and you, you made reference to some of your family's and friends and, and maybe neighbours as well. But I mean, from yeah. the circles of people and naturally through this this campaign as well that you've um, had contact with lots of other people, have you found that, that has been the case with, with other people outside of your family as well? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of people have seemed to say, oh, I just don't think I can though until this difficult period is over mm. and I suppose that's okay too as long as they're aware of that and and are prepared to do it when mm. the time comes um yeah but even just I know when lockdown was first announced all the you know the memes and things going around on social media about like all the homeschooling mums racing to Dan Murphy's to stock up like it was funny at first I think but just 
sort of a bit much now. It's like, hold on. It's a serious issue. Like we don't all want to become, you know, reliant on that to get through the day but there there is a line sort of that's perpetuated sort of... by social media sometimes um and it's funny I love a joke like I'm sure I liked and laughed at lots of them but yeah it's it's not a healthy way to manage your stress long term 100 <laughs> percent. and yeah, talking and it's... about homeschooling and, and just parenting mm-hmm. in general did you find that once you made that shift um and sort of then eased your, your way out of the the daily drinking that it helped you with just your general parenting and homeschooling and if that if that is the case then how i think so i think it was for me anyway was trying to be a better version of myself like for the kids and like a good role model and taking control of my behaviour. And I do think I would never say I would wake up hungover or anything. It wasn't like I was drinking that much. But, you know, it's harder to stay hydrated if you're drinking a lot. And so, you know, I might wake up feeling a bit irritable, which made homeschooling that much harder. Um, So I don't know if it was a mindset or a physical change, but I did find I was less... Probably. Yeah, like I was, I was just less agitated, you know, in the day I got, I was more patient with the kids. I mean, I'm not the most patient person, but I was more, I've been more patient with them. So you did see a difference. Yeah. I did. I definitely did. And my husband slept a lot better not drinking every night, which makes a huge difference too to the household, you know, mood when everyone's a little bit happier and better slept. So it definitely yeah. made a big difference, yeah, mentally and physically. Now, through your experience, you know, how can other parents then recognise any of the problem signs um, similar to, to what you had sort of seen leading up to realising, um, I guess, the effects on your body and your life um, overall? And in, in that case, you know, what can they do and what should they do to turn it around, do you think? Well, I think if you're noticing yourself perhaps like, starting to drink earlier and earlier in the day that's obviously a bit of a sign that you probably increased your intake and maybe push it out a little bit later each day instead Um, we're probably finding like we did we were going through a lot more so that became obvious at the end of the week when we'd go grocery shopping and so the thought of maybe buying a bit less and and making sure that lasts the week that's another thing i was a big fan of my kombucha in a wine glass i have to tell you so you know i I find that interesting because i was just thinking about that casey i was thinking it wasn't even so much about the fact that you wanted alcohol you just wanted a reward yeah that's right and i think that's the way for a lot of people because 100 percent. yeah it's just that unusual circumstance and trying to find some you know positive at the end of the day So, but yeah, a bit of chocolate instead is, you know, who doesn't like that? And yeah, just being aware of, I think we're supposed to have the recommended intakes, like 10 standard drinks a week maximum. And like we were saying, if you think a normal standard drink, we're not pouring that at home. So even just one a day, that's more than the one standard drink, you're probably hitting that easily so there is a drinks calculator on the website i was going to speak about that yeah and Um, you know but that can be a good idea just to get an idea of where you're at and and then to just gradually shift that back to the level you're happy with yeah. yeah. And I guess the good news is that there is a lot of practical support available right now. Um, how to change behavior online. There's um, 24 seven helpline numbers. Um, and even, I guess the smaller steps such as introducing an alcohol free day, as you just mentioned before, having one less drink a day um, and or you know, pushing back um, when you start drinking um, and all the other tips that you just shared as well can have an incredible impact. So just before we go, I just wanted to mention that we we had actually published an article for the um, the Drug and Alcohol Foundation titled One in Five Aussies Regret How Much Alcohol They Drank uh, During Lockdown. Um, and the article does highlight um, lots of key points given that nearly one in five Australians wish they had drunk less alcohol during the COVID-19 uh, initial lockdown, that uh, nearly 20% want to reduce the, the amount of alcohol they've been consuming recently, and at least 12% of people drank every day during lockdown. Um, 
Um, and one in 10 said that um, on average that they drank more than the recommended guidelines, as we were just saying with the standard drinks, mm. we're not necessarily measuring. It's easy to. A hundred percent. For them to add up. And the article also, as you just mentioned, has a link through to the Drug and Alcohol Foundation's quick and interactive drinking calculator, which is worth um, a look-see for sure. So, Casey, we've loved this chat today. If you were to summarise any of your key messages for anyone watching and listening, um, what would they be? Just to try to be aware of your behaviour, take stock of what you've been doing and what you perhaps want to do in the future, and then just be yeah empowered to make a change if you think that's the course you need to take and just Love small it. steps small steps small steps equal big changes in the long run so and then maybe do just <laughs> finding a replacement for that daily ritual yeah. um reward. Yeah. you know kombucha is a great replacement um <laughs> making you healthier at the same time <laughs> and it's worthwhile just to mention one last time the longer a habit is left to form the harder it can be to change these sure. so i can hear that some you're busy with your little ones we'll let you go for everyone watching listening we'll have the links through to the drug and alcohol foundation and we're going to let you hang on little spider-man you, know <laughs> you take care casey thanks for your time and thanks so much take care thanks for having me Okay, bye.